And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. We're traveling back in American history, back to the 1800s today. We're going to be journeying across Lewis and Clark's expeditions, but we're not just going the expedition like a game I reviewed back. This is sort of a sequel of Lewis and Clark. It's called Discoveries, where we're not only just exploring, but where we are discovering and journaling about what we've found, the different species, the different plant life. It is a dice-based game that is for two to four players. It says it plays in an hour. More on that later. Let's take a look. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. The rule book has lots of historical information about the journals of Lewis and Clark, and I love historical themes and when they put real things in rule books like this. They also talk about using the term American Indians in this because in a census it showed that over 50% of, of people of that heritage preferred that name for them. Throughout the rule book, again, more history, very interesting. And it even has a timeline of their expedition. They even said that there's some misspellings and mispunctuation in there. And they kept them just the way they were written. That is cool. Now at the beginning of the game, depending on how many players there are, there'll be some neutral dice, a certain amount placed there. And a certain amount of cards may be taken out of the deck. And they're actually shown so people can see which ones and symbols are taken out of the game. Over the course of the game, you're going to be trying to go on journeys, make discoveries, and journal about them by crossing rivers and mountains and getting points or sometimes specialing in a sp specific animal type. You'll also be talking to uh, friendly and wary tribes. Now every player will get their own sort of player board tableau. Their dice will go in this area here with the, at the beginning of the game. They will roll them and put them in here once. They will, through a drafting procedure, get a starting exploration card. This is the only card they're going to be able to score. And then this shows some of the final end scoring. Uh, for example, depending on whether you specialize in mammals, like this one, or fish, or birds, or uh, plants, depending on how many cards you have scored with that, with one of those, two of those, three of those, or four of those, you'll get a certain amount of points. It also tells you how many of those cards are actually in the full game. You'll also be going for different Indian teepees. So this kind of gives you some final game scoring. Here's the different action board. Now on your turn, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to activate some of your dice, or you're going to reclaim your dice from different spots. When activating dice, you can activate only one type of action. So for example, if I had... Uh, let's say two hiking. That's what I had rolled. You don't re-roll these that often. Uh, you could take one or both of these actions. Uh, if I want to take the horseshoe, this is the only one I would take. So one action, you could take as many dice for that action as you'd like. Now let's say I want to use these two shoes. Down here we have what's called triggered actions. These are ones that typically they will take more than one turn to do most of the time, unless you have a special card that makes you do things differently. Uh, and then these ones up here are things that can be done just on that turn. So this is one of the triggered actions. I could take both of these hiking and put them here. Notice there's two boxes here. This means that I need two shoes. And I ha if there's multiple boxes, I have to place that many dice there at the same time. So I couldn't just place one here. I actually have to do two. And when I put two here, you notice one of the boxes has an arrow. It says go away. So one die will stay here. One of them will go. And it will be placed on one side of the bank of the river or the other, depending on what logo is on that side. That would be it. That's my turn. It goes to the next player's turn. They move very fast. When it comes back to my turn, I want to activate this horseshoe. Boom. I put it there. I just need one. That's my turn. It comes back around me. Now, I have this and this. Also, keep in mind that my card, I can either have one river and then one mountain, or I can just do two mountains. Now I'm getting set up to do well with two rivers and three rivers. So a total of five rivers. Ugh. And I'm going to need to journal these to trigger. Now anytime when it's your turn, that would have been the end of my turn. On my next turn, if I just trigger this, I could go three rivers, but I can't do this because I didn't trigger it with a journal. This is a letter journaling about what you found. And I would end up taking all these dice off, and so this would have done me no good. 
Now, if I'm triggering both of these, I'm getting five rivers, but that does mean no good here because I still need mountains. So maybe what I do is I take this die, and this says I can put any die here to swap. So I'll put this here. I can swap explorations with this and another one. Maybe I swap it with one that's out by the board with this one that has, I can use this to go up just a bunch of rivers. And then this die goes. And as you're gonna notice, once my die's there, you'll see a bunch of other dice from other players and some gray neutral dice around. We'll get to those later, but notice that dice will start filling up on those boards. So when it comes to my turn again, I can journal this. And if I journal this, anytime you journal, it has to be, you always have to put what you need first, and then you trigger it by putting a journal because you're journaling about your, your adventure. When I do that, you're gonna get whatever's here. In this case, I could go up three rivers. And I could complete this exposition. I'd get three points and I would put it under here. And anytime you trigger, any dice from triggered actions all get picked up and re-rolled and placed here, which means this dice that I put earlier was kind of a waste of a turn because it didn't do anything because you need to journal it in order to get there. Well, what if I wanted to get three and two and I wanted to get five rivers? I would need another die for here. So instead of doing an action, the other thing you do is reclaim dice. And when you reclaim dice, you can reclaim all of them regardless of color on this side of the board, or you can reclaim all of them regardless of color on this side of the board, or you can reclaim all of your color regardless of where they are, meaning on the boards or on another player's board. Because if I take all these dice, I then roll them and they are in here and I get to use other people's dice unless when it's their turn, they decide to reclaim only their colors and they will steal these from me, which timing is excellent because sometimes I might be getting ready to trigger something with some of their followers who are loyal to them and at any time they can pull them back. It's one of the most interesting mechanics in the game. So let's say I'm here, right? And oh, good, look at this, I've got a journal. So let's say, oh, I've got this other player's journal too. So on my next turn, I can activate this. And when I do that, I now have journaled, oops, sorry, this would not have been there. <laughs> I would have taken the action of taking two journals, because as soon as you put any journal, this triggers. And so I would have triggered all of this. So I would get three and two, I'd get five. Now, why would I want five? Well, this one allows me to trigger this one, and that used three rivers. And again, this would go under here and score. But I have two rivers left sort of banked, right? Well, after you uh, do an exploration, you replace that card by one of those three. This one has two rivers. So I could immediately claim this and do it because I had two rivers left over. Exactly. So I would get this as well, and I would then pick whatever one I wanted to replace that with. And when you do that double move, you actually get an additional turn right away. So sometimes you're not just trying to do the most efficient thing. Sometimes you're trying to save up for a big move. Now, once you trigger anything, all the triggered dice get rolled and they get put back in here like that. So I've got some of his dice, a neutral dice and this. So let's talk about some of these neutral dice. We talked about these triggered actions here. The first one is uh, we saw that I could put a die there. We already saw that and we can get a new card, a new exploration card. Here is I can place one American Indian. I put one here and then it goes to the board and I get to select a friendly tribe. That's that icon. And that's when I get one of these neutral dice. I pull it from the pool and I roll it and I can use it on a subsequent turn. Now, if there aren't any gray dice, neutral dice left, I can take one from whoever has the most. Now these American Indians, I, I can only take with that one die, a friendly tribe. That's that single. Those are wary tribes, almost the arrowhead. So the only one I can take is this one. I would take it and then this would get replaced. Now these cards in the deck are all double-sided. So this is an exploration card, but that's the top of the deck. It gets flipped. And now this is only three wary tribes out there. So I get that card and these cards go near me and they allow you to basically break some of the rules of the game. They also give you TP points. Because remember at the end of a two or three player game, the one with the most TPs is going to get 12 points, six for the next. We're in a four player game. You'll get 12, eight and four for first, second and third place on TPs. Now, normally you can only take one type of action, but as many of those as you want. With this card, you can take two different actions, but only one dice each. So I could take this and go here, and I could take this and maybe go here and swap or whatever. But you can take two different dice. So these cards typically allow you to break some of the rules of the game. Now, a lot of these allow you to explore and get discoveries much more efficiently. Let's take a look at this one. So this one allows me to go three rivers with just one hiking, where before it would have take, cost me two and I would have had to get rid of one of those die to get three rivers. And some of them have multiple things. This one is just, hey, two rivers, and all I have to do is put a journal there. 
That's awesome. So these, these act just as the other one. So when it's my turn next time, I can start building on these as if it was one of these triggered events. And how to get those wary tribes, the ones with the uh, arrowheads, is you would put two American Indian dice here. You'd lose both of them to the board. You would gain a neutral die to roll like that. And that, and you would get the card, any of the cards that you want that has that logo on it. Now the last action is this one where you can take any die of any type. You put it here and then it gets booted to the board in the respective spot. And then you could take any dice face, one or two of them, and you can change them to any face you want, but they have to be the same face. And then you can't use them until next turn. So as the game goes on and people explore, new cards are filling those up, or when people are talking to Indians, they're getting filled up on the other side side there. As soon as the last card is gone, it's pretty much the last round of the game. And then we do end game scoring, which again is just counting up all the points of the ones that you have explored and then giving yourself the amount of points depending on how many of those logos you have and doing the TP points. The one who has the most points is the winner. There is Discoveries. Look, I love historic themes. They are my favorite types of games of ones that I can get it's just totally entrenched in the history of something that actually really happened. The rule book has a lot of that historical information, which I love. They put most of it there because there's not really much in the cards as if, you know, like the Lewis and Clark original game had a lot of stuff in the rule book, but also had, you know, stuff on the cards and such. And this, uh, you know, a sequel to that, I was really interested in this because I loved the Lewis and Clark idea. It made me learn more about it. I went and watched documentaries about it before I played the game originally. But that game was just a little too much of a Euro game for me. And that game was just a little, a little too, it was too long for me as well. So when I found out this was coming out, same type of theme, but it's a lighter dice game and it's shorter. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be perfect. So how, does it live up to my expectations? Kind of. Um, I, this is a, I think it's a really good game. Uh, there's a couple of fascinating spots to this. My favorite worker placement game is Manhattan Project. And the reason because of that is that interesting thing of the timing of reclaiming your workers. And sometimes your workers are with you and sometimes you have espionaged them onto other players' boards. That's one of my favorite parts of that game. And this has a very similar mechanism with those followers, your dice. And you're rolling them and placing them. And then depending on when you reclaim and how you reclaim, you can get other people's workers into your pool and you could start using them but then you've got to be careful because if you're using them for triggered actions and they're sitting there waiting, that opponent might want to do something else really bad, but he might see what you're doing with his guy. He might reclaim them back. And it, that really tension of trying to figure out the timing of when should I reclaim them? When should I do them? Should I use them? Should I not? Great decision makings and the flow of the game of that is awesome. Claiming from one side of the board or the other or your own. That is my favorite part of this game is trying to figure that out. Now, the other part of the game that I that, that that didn't hit me as hard is it does feel very much like a efficiency Euro game. So if you love those Euro games where there's there, you're just trying to be as most as efficient as possible, building combos. If you if you like deck builders where you're building a bunch of combos, even though you don't deck build in this game, building up those when you talk to the American Indians and you build up a bunch of these special abilities and you can combo some of those together to do get what you want. That is cool, but it's very Euro feeling. And then, you know, getting those extra cards from the American Indians that allow you to be more efficient and do things. And then you're looking at the cards and can you do a big double move? And there's a lot to think about, a lot about efficiency, a lot about what am I gonna do to maximize this turn? What am I trying to do in one, two, three, four turns from now? The dice are changing. So it's good. It's a very well designed game and I like it. Personally, I think it might be a little too Euro for my tastes, but I, I'm gonna keep it for a while and play it some more and keep, continue to play it some more before I decide whether I'm gonna keep it or not. Cause the theme I just love so much and there's so much about the game I love, but it's it's less puzzly and more Euro-y if that makes sense. The other thing is the flow of the game, the pace of the game. The pace is great, it's so fast. It moves so fast, you're like, boom, okay, I'm moving this, your turn. Okay, I'm gonna do this, your turn. Okay, I'm gonna claim this, I'm gonna roll, your turn. The pace and the flow is very fast in this game. It says 60 minutes. Even on your first play, it's probably gonna take 45, maybe less. Uh, it takes a while. Some of the icons on the cards are not, it takes you a while to learn some of those. I mean, you'll be looking at the book. Now the rule book does talk about all of those different cards and what they do, very clear, but you'll be referring to that a lot, even after first couple of plays, because it takes a while to get to uh, learn those. So overall, very good game, awesome theme, awesome mechanisms with those dice, great decision-making, Maybe a little too Euro for me, but for many, I think this is gonna be a big hit. That's Discoveries. 
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.